come from beyond time, from beyond the outer limits of your imagination, and he's ready to blow your mind. Mr. Meaty, Mr. Fucking Meaty, do you guys know how many of you have suggested this to me and how many times I've wanted to cover it? Yeah, I meant to cover this show last year during Traumathon 3, though if you were part of that live as it was happening, you know that there was a ton of technical issues that prevented me from doing full videos on many topics, one of them being the highly requested, highly gross out, and highly unwatchable Mr. Meaty. Yeah, so Mr. Okay, Meaty. Oh my yeah, fucking god, that's so loud. Yeah, so Mr. Meaty was a show that featured two of the absolute ugliest puppets to have ever existed, Josh and Parker, and their wacky adventures as fry cooks for the Mr. Meaty restaurant, a conglomerate chain ruled over by an Edward R. Carney, Mr. Meaty himself, who has blue skin because he was cryogenically frozen for a hundred years just because, well, just because he could. Together, Josh and Parker live out their mundane lives until something comes up that makes it not so mundane, and then shit hits the fan faster than you can say, fuck, oh my god, stop, stop, just change the fucking channel. This show is hard to watch, but whoa, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, aren't I? Why don't I reel it back all the way to the very beginning? It all started with the Grogs, a Canadian puppet troupe founded by Jamie Shannon and Jason Hopley in 1992, just when they were both 21 years old. The namesake of their company, Grogs Inc., comes from their first major group of characters, monster puppets known as the Grogs. The Grogs were featured on YTV, which you know, I, I'm not too familiar with Canadian television, but from what I've seen, it seems to be one of the prominent places where cartoons and kids media in general was aired in Canada. The Grogs at the time were actually pretty popular as they helped YTV reach an all-time high in viewership when they conducted a 12-hour raid of the channel, featuring their more prominent Grog puppet, Warren Chester Grog. Kids really loved it, and YTV loved the money, so they wanted to merchandise the Grog brand, but unfortunately that's when things got real dicey. The relationship between YTV and the duo puppeteer soon soured, which led to the eventual termination of both them, but not before Hopley and Shannon met Jack Lenz, who encouraged them to make their own company, and so they did, Grog Inc. Now I know what we're all thinking, man, these are some fucking ugly puppets, and to some extent I agree, but I gotta be honest, I love these puppets all the same. All the time, most puppeteers aim to be overly kid-friendly as to not offend or cause a ruckus with the parents, and so they make puppets that are pretty much, you know, your standard cute and fuzzy and really lacked personality that you would see on, say, Sesame Street. Or sometimes they'd completely fail and make horrible, uncanny puppets that just scarred kids for life. I'll, I'll probably talk about this show some other time, but seriously, this is, this is horrifying. It's me, Ernie. Today on Peppermint Park, we're introducing the letter A. Grogs, however, found a nice in-between. They made puppets that were ugly, sure, but memorable all the same. You just don't really see puppets like this at all, and usually when you do, it's done by accident. You might disagree with me, but I actually really like them. These were clearly made with kids in mind, and I kind of like that about the Grogs. But, oh boy. Maybe they needed to dial it back on the ugly factor a bit, cause soon enough, they struck a deal with Nickelodeon and began producing the show Nanalan. Remember Nanalan? 
Well, fuck Nana Land. We ain't talk about that bitch today. But after working a few years on children's programming for Nick, not just Nana Land, but a Whoopi Goldberg show too, which I had no idea existed, Nick gave him a shot at making something much more mature. And so we entered the territory of Mr. Meaty. Yeah, yeah, we, we get it. Anyways, this was aimed towards teenagers, not just kids, which I believe was Nickelodeon's first mistake. See, Nickelodeon at the time did have a programming block for teens, but that only aired during the weekends at the time of Mr. Meaty's airing, and unlike today, it wasn't its own channel until after Mr. Meaty's cancellation. And though this was aimed towards teens, unfortunately it was shown to kids before it became a real show. I mean, you'd expect this to be on Teen Nick's block, but no, Mr. Meaty eventually moved to Nicktoons, where all cartoons go to die. And Nicktoons' demographic, by the way, was majorly kids. So yeah, I guess I can see why this was so traumatizing to a bunch of kids, because it was never meant for them in the first place. The show first started off as shorts in between ad breaks for other Nickelodeon shows. So, like it or not, you were pretty much exposed to these characters almost every time. Which is funny, because I'm sure most of us had no idea what Mr. Meaty was the very first time we saw the title card. So we just got stuck to it, hoping to see something maybe funny, maybe cool, and then... Oh, oh my god, oh Jesus. Oh. So yeah, it didn't give the strongest first impressions. Especially since, well, this show wasn't made for kids, and yet it was still exposed to kids nonetheless, terrifying the shit out of them for years to come. It's a bit jarring though, don't you think? If this was aimed towards teens, why use puppets? I don't think teens would watch puppets anyway. But like I said, these aren't your classic fuzzy wuzzy characters. Nah, these, these are some really gnarly fellas and oh god, so many of them were just so... So... Yeah. <laughs> so of course, knowing that puppets weren't going to attract teens, Mr. Meaty focused on one thing teens love the most. Edgy, gross out humor. Jesus Christ, this is like nemesis for kids. Seriously, there was an episode where Josh wanted a girlfriend after being dumped. So what does Parker do? Make him a girlfriend, of course, with a meat making machine. From from the samples of all of his favorite uh, women. So then all these ingredients are mashed together to make the perfect woman, right? <laughs> Wrong. So here came Mr. Meaty in all its glory, with its two ugliest fuck protagonists, Josh and Parker, and the ugliest fuck situations they got themselves in. It's really no different than regular show when you really think about it. Both shows starred two very lazy employees who barely scrape by during their work, just enough not to get fired. And then they meet some sort of dilemma, a very simple one mind you, and then it becomes just a whole nother thing that almost is incomprehensible. But it doesn't end there, as the worst is yet to come, as we discuss the other horrors that lurk in this show, why the show is so gross, how most of the show is now lost media, and of course, the puppets themselves. Stay tuned. Touch that dial. We'll be right back. Hey, look everyone, I'm a marketable plushie. All throughout Traumathon, the wonderful people over at Makeship will be running a crowdfunding campaign for the Goose Boost plush till Halloween. And once it reaches its goal, it'll be produced immediately after and shipped in early 2023. So now's your chance to do whatever your sick mind has in store for me. Go nuts! Whatever! Just make sure to buy a plush before the end of the month because he will never return! Get yours today on Makeship! Links are in the description below. So Josh and Parker are our two bros that go into crazy situations both equally lazy and both unlikable in their own ways. Aside from being idiots, Josh thinks more about girls than anything else, and Parker is a misogynist. They cannot let a girl work here. This is Mr. Meaty, not Sister Meaty, okay? Yeah, okay, Redditor. 
Aside from our two characters, the remaining cast is their own nightmare fuel of uncomfortable. Like seriously, it's crazy just how unnerving so many of these designs were. Even characters that were supposed to be, you know, normal looking, looked really unnatural. It didn't help that the quality of the puppets can sometimes be put into question in certain shots. And though they may seem crudely done, this is actually done on purpose. The Grogs designed them in a way so that they could have very subtle and expressive faces which shows with the way they made their puppets. So it allows their hands to basically make all the emotes that they need to make. Wow, what do I play, Fortnite? You can see this with Kermit, for example. It gives the puppeteers a lot of freedom to do what they want as much as they want. And as much praise as I gave these puppets before, I'm still gonna give praise to it now. Yeah, seriously, I think the puppets, while really, and I mean really, they're super hard to look at at times, were still articulated in a way that gave very subtle movements like small smirks and smiles, as well as the way the puppeteers moved the characters having small gestures and stuff. It's subtle, and I like that about these puppets. I also think this gives the puppeteers greater comedic expressions. Say what you want, but I think this is pretty funny. And it's these kind of moments that I can tell that there was a lot of love into this show, and the puppeteers were probably having a blast just puppeteering these little characters. Although I totally understand if people can't look past the horrendous designs to see what I mean. Yeah, the show was made to be gross, and man they really can cross the line between gross and gruesome sometimes. Like my first exposure to the show was this one short with this goth girl who wants a bloody meat burger and Josh, being a horny teen and all, gave her an exclusive Mr. Meaty tour, showing her the meats, the microwave, the kitchen, the fryer, oh watch out it's slippery, oh and then oh fuck, oh, oh that's... That's fucking metal. What's funny that is that, the, oh my God, I'm actually laughing at this. It's funny because she holds her hand in there for so long and she, they just have time to complain, to talk and panic, but the scene holds on for this for so long that even Josh gets tired and, and says, Take your hand out already. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious and brutal. And that's one staple of the show people seem to bring up and criticize. The gross out shock humor that was so prevalent in the shorts and was even more prevalent when it was eventually greenlit as a full length show. And yet, I wonder why this show was so heavily criticized when Nickelodeon was doing this forever now. Even Jamie Shannon admitted in an interview once that they took inspiration from Ren and Stimpy simply because they thought that was the brand that Nickelodeon wanted to show. I, I, we actually were like, okay, let's do it. You know, it's like Ren and Stimpy, gross out humor. All right, let's do it. And uh, we thought we were kind of making something kind of Nick-like even. So there you go. I think, uh, you know, it, it's just sort of, I did think we were making it for an older age group than the Saturday mornings that it played on. That was definitely a, a, a truth of that. So it kind of it's frightened some kids because I think really only six and seven year olds watch Saturday morning cartoons anymore. And yeah, looking back, there was a ton of gross out shows in Nickelodeon back then and even now. I mean, we had Ren and Stimpy, Butt Ugly Martians, Ah Real Monsters, Invader Zim, even shows like Kablam and all that could get really gross at times. Not good to bite off more than you can chew, especially if what you're chewing on is a human brain. <laughs> The Grogs weren't wrong. Nickelodeon did have an extensive history of being the gross-out network. Even today with shows like Fanboy and Chum Chum, Sanjay and Craig, Pickle and Pina, and so many others, it, it's no wonder why they went with the direction they did. It was, by all means, a smart move with just bad execution. But the execution was just never in their control, so you can't blame them. Puppets aside, some of the situations they got into were terrifying. I mean, seriously. I read a comment somewhere that described it perfectly. It's like the precursor to Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. I already mentioned the meat girlfriend, but what about the tapeworm? Yeah, everyone mentions the tapeworm. It is so uncomfortable to watch, and God bless you if you hate bugs, because this fucker is huge and gross. Oh, oh yeah, and then there's this dude who wants to buy the worm off of them, and then this happens. Ah. Oh. 
Oh, that's just so lovely, isn't it? Or how about this episode, the one I personally considered the absolute worst, which is called I Love Lizzie. In it, Lizzie, a new girl in town, wants to work for Mr. Meaty. Too bad she's a fucking alien. She wants to M-preg the other two characters. Oh, but she can't. Oh, well. Oh, woe is me. They feel bad for her, and so they just let her fuck a burger and... Y yeah. Yeah. Also, I just hate the burping in this fucking episode. I, I, I can't stand burps. They're, they're so fucking gross. Impressive. Also, the show has a ton of shit jokes. And I don't mean like the jokes as in the quality of the jokes are shit. I mean like, there's a, like a, a surprising amount of shit. Look, even Biru hates it, right, Biru? <laughs> Although, I I should come clean with this video and say that, well, I was a preteen, kind of a teen around this time, I guess a tween. I don't know, is that is that what it was called? No. Well, anyways, I was pretty much the perfect demographic for this show. And honestly, it definitely was made for me. Unfortunately, this is one of those times that I struggle to find most of the things here creepy, as I really do think this show is pretty funny, gross out and all. You guys are gonna hate me, but I actually burst out laughing while I was watching some of these episodes. Especially this one episode where Parker dies of embarrassment after a viral clip of him, well, goes viral, and then he revisits his past memories of his most embarrassing moments because death wants to teach him a lesson or something. And one of those moments happens to be a pool party incident where this suddenly happens. That is, that is so fucking loud. Like, oh my god, it's like a shit post made today. I just, it just, I'm, it's just so fucking funny, man. So yeah, it can be gross, and trust me, not all of it stuck with me. But I do find the show funny at times, and believe it or not, I don't really find it as gross as other gross-out shows that Nickelodeon had at the time. It's very on-brand. When I think Mr. Meaty, I definitely think Nickelodeon, especially since the color scheme sort of reminds me of the channel's logo. It's a show that, upon my research, was enjoyable to watch. Well, okay, maybe not enjoyable, per se, all the time, but it was still a lot of fun. So, maybe I'm not the best at reviewing this, but I can definitely see where it fell flat for so many viewers. It just simply wasn't made for you, either back then or even now. But I highly recommend trying to find the show anywhere that you can if you're a sick individual like me who enjoys a good poopy fart cum joke every so often. I mean, I'd definitely give Mr. Media another shot if I could. And when I say look for it wherever you can, I really do mean it. Some of the episodes are gone forever. Like, nobody can actually find some of the shorts and episodes that the show had while it was running on air. And this is mainly due to the fact that Nickelodeon never released this show on DVD anywhere at all. You can find some of the shorts in this one DVD called Nick Picks. And even then, I think it's just like one short out of, I don't know, the dozens that they've already made. And plus, the Nick Picks DVD is pretty rare and kind of expensive. So just look online. Even the creator of the show doesn't have a DVD or any recordings of the show at all. And that's really sad. Well, whether you're willing to give it another shot or not, that show still lives in infamy, either for your own trauma's sake or because you are a sick individual like me who thinks stuff like this is funny. And if you're one of the people who didn't like this show and wanted it off the air, well, you weren't alone. There were a bunch of very angry vegans that wanted this show off the air. Vegans who had no fucking clue what the show was about at all. Seriously, I'm not even kidding. They set up a petition thinking that Mr. Meaty was some sort of show that brainwashed like kids to eat meat or something like that or whatever, but it wasn't at all, as we both know. And God bless Nickelodeon, they really defended this show and even insulted them by saying, oh, if you're gonna actually make a petition about this show, at least watch it. Damn, that's fucking... 
That's a slap in the face, isn't it? Seriously, give Mr. Media another shot. They're pretty funny. I like the episodes that are actually lost tapes episodes, which I, I thought was really hilarious, especially as someone who loves mockumentary horror films. You can find some of these episodes online on YouTube right now. Hopefully someday the rest of the episodes can be found. And maybe, who knows, maybe this video changed your mind about it. And if not, I guess Mr. Media's just gonna be there forever in your mind, scaring you with images like this. Is that foreskin?